Oh, well, today we are going to cook that orange slice cake. I want you to look at it. There it is, the one I made last year. There's the picture with my pretty apron on that somebody gave me, and I put it in the cookbook. You know, I've been thinking about this thing about this orange slice cake. We've got a national flag. We've got a national bird, and I think we need a national cake, <laughs> and I think it should be orange slice cake because it is so delicious and it lasts forever and it's got a lot of the good ingredients from all over the place so we're going to start i'm going to keep my recipe right in front of me so i can see it i'll just kind of tilt it up right here where i can look at it i have to get it out every thanksgiving because i can't remember what all goes in it i don't make it from heart i make it from a recipe there we go. Okay. All right, here we go. First thing we're going to do is we're going to put in a cup of butter. And y'all know that's two sticks. So we're going to put a, a, a cup of butter, and it's salted butter. We're going to put it in our mixer, which is right here. And I let this butter uh, sit out. You don't want to do it in the microwave, but you do want it to be soft. So I did this. And I'm going to turn you around this way where you can kind of see. And I'm going to turn my mixer on. I remember to uh, plug it in this time. So I'm going to beat this up. And to that, we are going to add uh, two cups of sugar. And I got it right on the money. Two cups. It's, it's really, uh, y'all will be proud of this cake. Because you can leave it out. You can leave it out on your counter under a cover. It lasts forever. Do uh, you know it just lasts and lasts and lasts? If you make it for Thanksgiving, you'll have some left for Christmas. And it's really great with black coffee, y'all. While that's doing that, we're gonna let that cream a while, and then we're gonna add our eggs. All right, y'all. We've creamed our butter. And our sugar together till it got creamy. See how creamy? Okay, and now we're going to add four eggs. And we're going to add them one at a time. Pretty eggs, nice and yellow. I kind of feel rushed today. I know that Thanksgiving is really soon and I got to get this stuff going. Okay, let's do our last two eggs in there. All right, here's our fourth egg going in. those eggs in here reminds me of my granny. She um, used to get together with her sister. She had a bunch of sisters and they'd get together before Christmas and, they, and everybody would go over to Hattie B's house and they would make um, cakes and then they'd divide them out, the pieces, and they'd all take them to their own homes to feed to their children for Thanksgiving and Christmas. All right, now that batter's done. So all we did was add our um, eggs and our flour, I mean, eggs and butter and sugar. That's all that's in here. And I'm gonna move you and we're gonna go to the next part. Okay, y'all, this next part always amazes me. We've got a half a cup of buttermilk and you're supposed to use whole buttermilk. There was none to be found today. So I'm having to use um, non-fat or fat-free or whatever you call it. I'm, Anyway, 
What you do with this, now, your buttermilk, you put one teaspoon, and this is a teaspoon, of baking soda in it, into the buttermilk. Like that. And then you take a fork and you stir it till it almost doubles in size. Anyway, the weather's gorgeous today. The leaves are falling. My, uh, all of my trees are beautiful colors. The hickory trees are um, yellow and gold, really pretty. And then I've got maple trees that are red. And them standing next to green pine trees is just absolutely gorgeous. All right, we had a cup. We mixed it with our uh, teaspoon of baking soda. And look what we've got. I mean, we added a half a cup mixed a teaspoon of baking soda with it, and look, now we got a cup of buttermilk. It swells up. And so we're gonna go add this to our creamed mixture. So let's go do that. All right, now we're gonna add this to our creamed mixture. I can get it on. <laughs> Make sure everything's down in there good. It kind of, it will have in this batter, it has kind of a little bit of a, a curdled look, but it's not curdled, but it looks like it. Kind of. I'll show it to you in just one second. Okay. Let me get you up close where you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Do you see how the batter kind of has a, a curdled look to it? It's kind of like it's bumpy. That's how it's supposed to look. So don't panic when you see it, okay? This cake, anybody can make it, y'all. Anybody. So we're finished with that part. Now we I'm gonna move you back over here. We're gonna do the next part. Okay, y'all. Now, y'all may remember me doing this last year, but... We've got, and it gets you a large bowl because you're going to have a lot of stuff in it. And in that bowl, I have three and one half cups of all-purpose white lily flour. If the bag looks like this, okay? That's what the bag looks like. It says all-purpose. It's got a black emblem thing on it or logo or whatever you call that. And so, anyway, I've got that in here, and now, you then you've got to have one pound of your orange candy. Now, when you buy your bag of orange candy, well, this is kind of about the sunrise, you need a pound. Well, this isn't but 13 ounces in this sack, so you kind of have to estimate um, a few more ounces so you'll get a complete pound, plus or minus. You know, it's going to be fine, but anyway... So you want to get you some orange candy. Now let me show you the trick. Let me get one out of the bag. Let me show you the trick about cutting these up. You got, I already cut mine up is this. This is one pound, okay? And and so when you're cutting up this orange candy, it can get sticky. So what I do is I put my knife in the flour and kind of coat it. Then I cut up my piece of candy. And you see how sticky they are? And you want it thin. And then when it gets like that, I put my knife back in there and I cut again. This is this part is the only time consuming part of it, but it's well worth it. It's well worth it. So anyway, in your three and a half cups of flour, you put your fruit or your candy. So here I'm gonna put one pound of candy in this. That's a pound of candy. Then I'm going to put um, two cups 
of coconut. And this is coconut that came in a bag. It wasn't in the freezer section. It was just regular unsweetened coconut, or just, you know, coconut. Put that in there. Then I'm going to put in one pound of dates. Now, if you, if you, when you shake your dates, if they make a sound, that not, that's telling you that you bought the right kind. You want the kind that are the sugar dates. Now, this is, you see, it's got little, it's, they're already cut, they're pitted, they're just sugar dates. Anyway, um, it takes a pound of these. So, this is uh, 10 ounces. And so, um, I'm going to guesstimate <laughs> six ounces. It'd be about half of that. Be, that'll be a pound. You got 10 and six is 16 ounces, which is a pound. So, I'm going to say about half of these. There you go. And you're going to put in your priester's pecans. Now, mine were, I got the, bought the kind of this. It's, they're already kind of cut up but they're not real fine. I like them kind of like that. And here's what I bought. I just, mine come, this is a big old box of them. And what I do is I put this box in the freezer and I just pull out how many I want, okay? And uh, that's how I do it. And then I, it's got a plastic bag in there. I take it covered like that and put it back in the freezer. And then the next time I want it, I just go in there and dip me out some of what I want. So it calls for two cups. Well, since I like pecans so much, I kind of put just a tad more <laughs> in that. Now, here's what you do. Let me push my sleeves up. Somebody was fucking at me the other day. Just bring the, push your sleeves up. So you want all of this to be coated. So take your hand and stir this up. And make sure that it's all mixed in really good. Especially the orange candy. It needs some flour on each side of that candy so it won't stick to each other. See how those four pieces are stuck together? Just take your time and mix it all in real good. Y'all are gonna love this. There were so many people last year that made this cake that, um, I mean, it was great. It was absolutely wonderful that y'all all made it. And each one of them that I saw last year were absolutely beautiful. And the people I've talked to said, we're making the same thing this year. This is kind of a tradition at our house. We always make orange candy cake. and orange, We call it orange slice cake. And it just wouldn't be Thanksgiving without it. It just would not be. We always make it. All right, there we go. See how I'm kind of doing it like that to make sure that it's separated. And now we're going to take our creamed mixture and mix it in, and we're going to cook it um, in a tube pan. I've got round tube pans and square tube pans, but I'm going to cook this one in a round one. And you cook it on... Uh, 250 degrees, which I've already got it there. It takes forever to cook. And I'm going to cook it. Usually I cook it about two and a half, three hours. Let's see what I put on your recipe. Bake for two hours and 30 minutes to three hours. That's what I thought. Because if you stick something in it um, and it doesn't look done, we'll put it back in the oven. You want it to be totally done. And I don't, at, at 250 degrees, I don't think you're going to be overcooking it, you know? I do not think you'll be overcooking it. So we're coming along real good this morning. I want to tell y'all now, some of you said you're going to uh, order the cookbook, that you're going to do the reorder. They're reprinting it. Because some of y'all were graphing so much they had to. And I don't blame you. I would, too, if I didn't get one. But your last day to order is what? I told you, Thanksgiving Day. And how many days is that? It's not very long, is it? Just a few days, and it's going to be Thanksgiving. So y'all better get that done. All right, I think that's mixed enough. Now I'm going to go here and get this other stuff and put in it. Y'all just bear with me. Here's our batter. 
What did I do with my spatula? Uh, yeah. Here it is. All right, here's your cream mixture. Now you put this in. Like that. Mm, 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 mm. What you say? It's going to be good, y'all. That's what we say. All right. And I want to tell y'all, I've seen so many of you grannies and grandmas and mamas in there cooking with your babies. And I'm going to tell you what, I have noticed that there are a lot of children in America that really want to be in the kitchen. They want to be here with us. They want to get their hands in this stuff. They also like to lick the batter and the bowl, the batter beater in the bowl, huh? I'm going to take this off and bring it over here because I don't want to waste it either. I want to get all that off of there. Get it all in. We're going to put it in our bunk pan. I'm going to show you how to do that because we're going to put some parts, put the paper down to make sure that... Uh, we get it all. All right, we're just going to fold this over like that. I might have to get me a spoon in a minute. And it is going to be a really thick, thick batter. Thick batter, thick batter. Okay, let me turn you off and I'll keep stirring. It's going to take a while. Okay, y'all, we've got our um, batter beaten up, and we've got our bunk tube pan. I used a tube pan. I've greased it and floured it, but to help the cake come out pretty, what I do is get a piece of parchment paper, and I fold it in four, like this. Hold it by the corner down there and cut that little corner out because that's where that circle's going to go. Like that. And then I just cut this little wing off of it. Uh-oh. I missed one of them, didn't I? This helps it to come out better. It really does. Because I'm telling you, it is a heavy cake. Y'all, this is well worth the effort. Your family will be, um, see how it comes out. Your family will be so excited that you took the time and the effort to fix them a really super good cake. And after Thanksgiving, you can invite your friends over for cake and coffee. You'll have plenty left because this feeds a big old crowd. All right, here's our batter. Now, y'all, it's really thick, so what you have to do is just get you some and take your hand and just push it off down in the bottom of that. And just kind of put some all around. We're not going to push it down real hard or anything like that. It's just going to be kind of regular. And the reason it takes so long to cook, two and a half to three hours, is it's so thick. It's so thick, y'all. So you just kind of push it into the side a little bit, like you. Like that. It's got mighty good stuff in it, I know that. Coming right along. <laughs> have all y'all bought your stuff for Thanksgiving already? I have. My granddaughter called me from Ole Miss. Well, she didn't actually call me. She texted me and she said, call me. So I called her. I said, what do you want? She said, I want to tell you what I want for Thanksgiving dinner. I've already told y'all this on one of the videos. So she proceeded to tell me all she wanted. And I hadn't heard from my other family yet. I don't even know if they're going to get to come. I hope they are, but I don't know. Everybody's so busy these days and times. Y'all see how I'm doing this now? You see how thick it is? You just got to kind of do your best with it, the best you can. 
This cake doesn't rise a whole lot because it's so thick if it rolls too much. And my regular cake dome doesn't even work. It's not tall enough. You know, you can't already find a, a tall cake cake dome. But um, I do have one that I think is going to work perfectly. I hope so. To put over it. Because you're supposed to, you don't refrigerate this. You leave it out. On your counter or on your buffet where you can see it. See how it goes all the way up to the top? And this is a big pan, y'all. You want to get all of it out of here. See, we like that. I'm trying to get all the goodie out. All right, when we cook this for two hours, then I'm going to come back and make this orange glaze that goes over it. And I'm going to show y'all how to do that too. So when I put it in the oven, I won't even see you again until three hours. Then I'll come back over here after three hours. All right, now what I'm going to do is take the back of my spoon and try to even it out just a tad. Like that. All right, it's, it's ready. I think I've got it fairly even. Okay, let me wash my hands again. Get the grease off of it, the batter. We're gonna pop this in the oven on 200, I've already got preheated to 250 degrees and I'm going to cook it on the middle shelf or the I put my shelf so it'd be right in the middle. And I'm gonna put my cake right in the middle and push it back. And I'm gonna look at my clock. And uh, it's right at one o'clock, it's 10 till. So I'll see you, let's see, uh, 10 to one, 10 to two, 10 to three. I'll see you in a bunch of hours. Here's something that fell out of the pan. Mmm, tastes mighty good, y'all. See you in a little bit. Okay, y'all, I think that our uh, orange slice cake is done. Said to cook it from two and a half hours to three hours. Well, I cooked mine three and a half hours at 250 degrees. And the reason for that is this. All ovens are different. So when I did the recipe book, I knew that. So the reason I put such a big span from two and a half to three and maybe even more is because all of your ovens are different. So let me show you how mine looks, okay? All right, let me get it out. We're gonna sit it right up here on this chopping block. And we're gonna look at it. Goodness gracious, look at that, isn't it pretty? Let me get it fixed here, and then I'm gonna bring you over here with me. All right, come over here. Okay, do you see how the cake, and you can see, let me get you really close so you can sure enough see it. See how it looks, all right? It's kind of crusty on top. And what I did is I took this little skewer a while ago and stuck it in, it was not ready. So let's try it again, see what happens. I'll use the other end. And it's clear. So, um, I need to let this cool, but before I do, I'm going to add a topping like on the top of it, and I'm going to show y'all how to fix that, okay? All right, I'm going to tell you how to make the glaze. We're going to mix two cups of sugar with three-fourths cup of orange juice, and I bought the orange juice that doesn't have any pulp in it. Get this to plain old orange juice, and I also... I will shake mine up. Make sure that all the goodie gets in there. All right, let's measure out three-fourths cup. And it is right there. Okay, I'm gonna pour it over my sugar. I'm gonna bring it to a boil and I'm gonna cook it one minute. So I'll be back in a minute. 
All right, now I'm fixing to uh, bring this to a boil. I'm stirring it around good in here, and I'm going to bring it to a boil. And then after it starts boiling, I'm going to cook it one minute, and it's like a glaze, okay? And we're going to spoon that, uh, half of it, on top of this cake. So, here we go. I'm, you're supposed to put little holes all in it. You can do a toothpick or a skewer or whatever, but they should be little holes. And put a lot, okay? This actually seals this cake, and I'm telling you, when you put it under your cake dome, do not refrigerate it. Um, just leave it under there, and uh, it will last and last and make you a good cup of coffee, black coffee. <laughs> and when you do that, When you do that, honey, you are going to love it. And people can come in during the holidays and you will be ready for them. All right, I've done a lot of holes in it. All right, let this come to a boil. I'm going to time it and then we're going to show you how to put it on, okay? Okay, y'all, this is beginning to boil and I'm telling you, it will boil over in a New York minute. <laughs> So you better stand right here with it or you're going to have a, a stove with all kind of junk all over it. So just keep stirring. See how it's trying to boil over now? Let me pick it up a second. I've got it turned on six. I better be timing it, hadn't I? All right. What this is doing, that syrup and that orange juice, I mean, that sugar, that orange juice is making a syrup. And that's what you want. You want a syrup. I'm going to turn it down a little bit more. I've got it turned on five right now. This has been an all day to do. But it's going to be worth it when I sit, by my, sit down by my fireplace and turn on my little gas logs and put my foot up there. It's going to be fine and dandy. Fine and dandy. Okay, we're about got our little syrup ready. Ooh, get it up, get it up, get it up, get it up. You see what I'm saying? Do y'all see that? It's about to boil over. Then I'll have to clean the stove. So you be careful, okay? All right, it's boiled a minute. I'm fixed to take this jewel up. Okay. Now, let me get y'all over here so we can put this on the... Let me sit you right here next to me. There's our cake. Let me get me a spoon. Okay. Here's our syrup, our orange syrup. Doesn't it look good? Heck, I might just do me some pancakes tonight and put orange syrup on top of it. All right, so here's what we're going to do. That sugar, you know, will turn hard on this cake. So the, the cake is still warm, and you want to put this on it while your cake is still warm. I didn't let it cool or anything like that. So I've got my spoon, and I'm going to hold it straight up and just barely put some on. And it's going down in those holes and in those cracks that you see present. And we're gonna do half of it on here. And then we're gonna let it sit on here for two hours and cool and absorb this syrup. Then we're gonna take it out of this pan. And I'm gonna go back there and get one of my paint brushes and we're gonna paint the side of the cake with all this good stuff. And that seals it, that seals it. So no moisture can get out. It makes it hard and crunchy. Yes, I think I am going to name this cake the National Cake of America. Orange Slice Cake. Wouldn't that be something? We need a national cake, don't we? Of course, there's so many good cakes out there be hard to pick one, but I, this would be my one. If I had to pick, this is my one right here. 
There's a lot of good cakes and I love them. But this one right here takes the cake. Y'all ever heard that? My mother, something odd would happen. She said, well, that just takes the cake. That's what she'd say. <laughs> All right, I think I'm getting pretty close to half of it. You want to make sure that you don't see a dry spot on it when you're putting this on. See how it's just going down in there so good? But I think uh, you just don't want a dry spot. I'm put a little bit right here in that hole. See how quickly it goes down into that hole? And it is penetrating your cake. Okay. I think that's good right there. There's a hole. I'll put some in it. All right. We're going to let it sit here now and um, cool for two hours. And then I'm going to come back and we're going to paint. We're going to paint a cake. Be back in a little bit. Well, in two hours. <laughs> All right, y'all. It's been two hours. And what I did with my orange juice uh, syrup is I put it back on the eye to get it re-hot and boiled it about 15, 20 seconds or something like that so I could get it re-hot. So I'm gonna put it over here and we're gonna try to take our cake out now. You know, since this is a tube pan, you can kind of knock on the bottom of it. The bottom should come up and it did. I'll pull up my paper. I'll pull this out. There we go. There we go. All right. Now remember, we put that paper around it, the parchment paper, and I told you it would help to kind of hold your cake together. It's still a little bit warm, but I waited the whole two hours. All right, I'm gonna pull it off gently because I want to. I don't want to mess anything up. Because this is gonna be a fine cake. Okay, I'm gonna pick this stuff off of here and put it on my arm. Oh. Well, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna tear this off of here. In a little bit. I'm not gonna do it right now. I'm gonna do it like this. Then I'll let it get uh, cool on the outside and I will, um... okay, so here's what you do. I pull it down and I'm gonna paint the whole outside of it with this orange syrup and a paintbrush, a regular paintbrush. And that's gonna, that's gonna seal the outside of this cake. Just paint it real good, don't miss a spot. And paint the whole thing, okay? Can y'all see? You can, can't you? While ago, while I was waiting on this to get done, maybe I can show you that little video tomorrow. I fixed me some sauteed cabbage and onions and some pickled beets, and they were so good. All right, I'm gonna finish putting this on now. I'm gonna keep going round and round and get a bunch on it, okay? Okay, y'all, I finished for today. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave this on my chopping block because I want it to continue to kind of cool and everything. But uh, I'm just gonna put this over it to protect it tonight from anything in case. Just sit it right down there like that. And in the morning, we will get up and look at it but I'm not going to look at it tonight. I'm going to leave it sitting right here, and then I'm going to take it out of that in the morning when it's good and cool and and uh, no more stuff on it. I mean, no more heat on it. See, it's already late at night, and I'm getting tired. I'm going to go brush my teeth. Y'all have a wonderful night. I hope the sheets feel so good to your little toes tonight. I know it will to mine. Bye-bye. Good morning, Facebook. I let the cake sit out last night. Um, and I had my top over it, and um, this dome is big. It fit right over it. So anyway, I wanted you to see what it looked like this morning. And remember, it took me longer, and every oven is different. It took me a little bit over three and a half hours. Really about 3.35 hours, 3.35, three hours and 35 minutes. Anyway, 
Listen to this. Listen. You hear that? It's a heavy, hard cake. You're going to have to have a really